This is Joe Pugh for IFL TV. We're here at Memorial Hall, Sheffield. It's the start of fight week for Lee Wood versus Josh Warrington. On the undercard is Janae Boston, joined by S-Jams, Shane Watson. How are you, mate? Good, mate. Um, I like this little venue, Memorial Hall. Um, the press conference here for the last one. Uh, it's a nice little venue. Tidy, got a decent amount of people here. Got a decent card, great main event. Excited. It should be, it should be a good week. Are you a curse for Rangers, mate? You went up there and the manager gets sacked? Mate, very sad. I'm uh, good friends with Michael Bill and, and co, Harry Watling and stuff, the coaching staff. Uh, all great people. Um, deserve more of a chance, really. Uh, really, really sad. Well, they got me tickets for the game as well. Took me to the training round and that. Is that the only reason why you're saying all this? No, no. Seriously, he deserved time. Like they, and when he was at Celtic, he lost like, his first few games, needed time, and now he ended up being a great manager. Like, at Celtic? Huh? When he was at Celtic, yeah, yeah, but he lost his first few games in charge. They were going to get sacked early, yeah. but you gave give people a chance, and then they turn out to be good, don't they? So that's what they did, and um, uh, yeah, it turned out to be well. But yeah, it's a bit unfair in the second, but you know, it's um, club decision. Whatever they whatever they think is the best thing to do is what they think is the best thing to do. Okay, we'll move on. Janae Boston, big step up this weekend. You confident he does the business? Yeah, he's fighting a Scottish guy actually, so it's a little bit sad for me, but. Uh, but yeah, no, nice little step up. The game guy, he just, he just knocked someone out. He was 6-0 actually, Fraser Wilkinson. So he's got experience. He's got some really good momentum, good form coming into this fight. So um, it's going to be a tough fight for Janaid. He has to be on it and at his best to pull off a conclusive victory. And then we'll have some good news for everyone straight after the fight. What is that news? <laughs> I'm not going to say much until um, the fight's over. He's got a fight to focus on first. and. Uh, I want all the focus to be on Corey McCullough because if he's not at the races, it's gonna it's gonna make it a very hard night for himself. We'll take you back a couple of weeks now since Joe Joyce suffered that defeat. I think it's your first interview that you've done since he uh, suffered that defeat. Uh, just taking some time to think about, look at his performance. What are your overall thoughts? Yeah, um, watched it back um, a few times now. Doesn't get any easier the amount of times you watch it back, as I've found out. But um, look. There's not really a lot to dissect here or to look into. It only went three rounds. The first round was really close and the next two really weren't. Um, I just think, and I agree with a lot of what I've seen online, I think Zhang's probably just answers everything Joe can do to an extent. I think he's just kryptonite in a way. I, I still believe that Joe's an elite old fighter and I still believe he can beat some of the top names. I just think fighting Zhang is just not good for him, really, and I have, I have to take part of the blame for that as well. And I'll admit that maybe we we should have looked a bit more into that before we did it. But it's a difficult uh, decision to make when you no one wanted to fight Joe, everyone wanted stupid money that wasn't available. And the only other thing is we believe Joe's an elite level fighter, and if you're an elite level fighter, you would believe that he could have beaten Zhang before. We didn't see a lot from Zhang that would have said that he could beat Joe previously. But I just think Zhang maybe wasn't anywhere near as good in his other fights. Apparently he had kidney problems and stuff like that. That's why he used to gas out and and maybe um, didn't have a great performance against Joey Forrest and stuff like that. But obviously he's a super elite fighter and he can, on his day I think he could probably be anyone. So but yeah, so it's, it's heartbreaking. But listen, Joe can come back. He can still compete at, at a high level and he can still be in great fights. He hasn't become bad overnight. He hasn't become chinny as I've been seeing some ludicrous people say online, you know, he's just got caught with a monster of a shot. And I'll be honest, right, when he got up, he was actually okay, yeah? And in the dressing room before, Gray said if he got up at eight, if he ever goes down, it will be fine to carry on the fight as long as he's not hurt and stuff like that. He wasn't, he was fine. It looked, I get why it looked bad to begin with, though. He looked disinterior-orientated so in the ring. If they stopped the fight struck when he was on the canvas, I wouldn't have moaned about it at all, right? But, because um, it looked like he was out cold, right? But if you're, I don't understand why he then let him get up. He asked him a question, he then answered it fine, and then stopped it, but do you know what? Do you think it's a bad stoppage then? I don't, I wouldn't go as far as bad, no. I wouldn't go as far as Questionable. bad. Questionable. Yeah, yeah. But then again, I actually was saying to my mum and dad, um, earlier today, in a way I probably am happy that they stopped it because Zhang wasn't slowing down, he didn't look like he was going to gas 
and maybe it would just happened a lot worse in the next round. So because it was, and the other thing I was going to say because it was right at the end of the, near, right near, I think it was like ten seconds left or something like that. But listen, hindsight to things, Zhang deserved to win. He deserved to win both fights. By far the better fighter. fighter. Out of both fights, I believe that we won a maximum of three rounds. So, um, yeah. So you have to give credit to Zhang. Would Jilei Zhang beat Filip Hergovic in a rematch? 100%. He won the first one. And actually, even worse, he would definitely win in a rematch because he's got way better since the first one. And that's it. And I, 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 Hergovic shouldn't have hasn't looked overly impressive. But listen, at the end of the day, Hergovic put, put up a better fight than what we did. So I'm not going to sit here and slate Hergovic off at all. Would Shinny Zhang beat Anthony Joshua? I believe he would. I believe he would. The problem is with that is Joshua... I'd say he's, got, he's not got, he's, he's adapted a bit and he's got decent natural movement. So that could cause some problems for Zhang, but I do believe that Zhang, especially in the current mindset, what it looks like to be current mindset of Andy Joshua, I believe Zhang would win. I believe Zhang could be anyone at his best. Who's sick? I believe at his best, he probably could. But it depends how, if, if he can get, if he can get to Usyk early, then mate, he can punch really fast as well. That's the, that's the issue. But mate, it's, it's definitely, he, I don't think he'd be a massive underdog in that fight, no. Right, we're going to move on to some comments that I know have frustrated you in the past two weeks, it's fair to say. I'm going to start off with John Fury. he done a, an interview, I think, with Seconds Out. He questions the management of Joe Joyce credentials, and he said, I think his words were, they don't know what they're doing. Um, I might be wrong with those words, but something in and around that. Can I just get your reaction to John Fury's comments, first of all? Right, well, the thing is, right, and this is boxing, right? Everyone's got an opinion and whatnot. Some people are entitled to it and some people really don't know what they're talking about, right? So let's just get it straight with John Fury. John Fury wasn't in any of the meetings that we had with Queensbury, right? So how did he know what the bad management was? How did he know the options that we had? How did he know the money that Joe's been earning? He knows none of those things. So we can't possibly comment on the management decisions, right? When we fought Zhang the first time, well, I say we, when Joe fought Zhang the first time, um, we didn't have a long list of options of people that wanted to fight him for the money that was available, right? The only option, we wanted while in, we wanted loads of other good guys, but they outpriced themselves. It's just a fact, yeah? The only guy, and credit to Zhang, by the way, I have the utmost respect for him, the only guy that would accept it, by the way, which was still for a large sum of money, by the way, was Zilai Zhang. And it had to be someone in the top 15 of the WBO. People forget this, yeah? Otherwise, you wouldn't keep the WBO interim title, which was, the, which was all of the power that Joe had. Um, yeah, and the only one that we could fight was Silai Zhang. Like, simple as that. Like, people need to get, like, get off of... Why is John Fury saying that stuff then, do you think? Because he just looked at it on paper and thought, oh, that's a terrible fight for Joe. He wasn't saying it before the fight, though, was he? Was he saying it before the first fight? It's easy to say all that stuff afterwards, isn't it? So easy to say it afterwards. But he weren't saying it before. So everyone can have that opinion afterwards, can't they? Like, I ain't being funny. He should focus on, like, he talks about Tommy and how his family's killed. I mean, Tyson Fury is obviously one of the best of this generation. Like, but like, he, he beat Jake Paul in a split decision and got dropped by Jake Paul. I think he should be worrying about more things like that rather than worrying about Joe Joy's bad management decisions. At the end of the day, you can only comment on things if you actually know the full facts. He wasn't there in the meetings. He wasn't there when um, when the, we spoke to the trainer about how he thought uh, Zhang, Zhang fight would be for Joe. But remember, we're also not the trainers. We don't prepare for the fight. We don't prepare the fighters to fight that style. We, well, this is not me putting the pressure on Tyus, by the way, but we go to the trainer with the fighters and they come back to us with the information on what and how they think Joe can beat them and if it's the right fight for them, yeah? We are not the trainers that make decisions on if the style is right for that fighter and things like that. We have our opinions, yeah, but the trainers always going to have the best opinion, especially when one's uh, a Hall of Famer and, and had one of the most world champions of all time. Like, question management and whatever. Like, Joe's earned a lot of money. He's going to earn a lot more money. He's achieved a lot in a very short space of time, yeah, with a short amount of fights. He can say whatever he wants at the end of the day, but he doesn't know the facts. That's simple, that's simple at the end of the day. Do you believe Joe Joyce will stay with Ishmael Salas? I can't really comment on it right now because there's a lot in, there's a lot going on, there's a lot in play, but 
There isn't a problem at all with Salas at all, but we've just not any. We've just not discussed it because just maybe exploring the other avenues. I, I wouldn't even go that far because the problem is Joe's gone on holiday to um, to the other side of the world for a while. He's going to take a little break, and um, he'll be back. And we haven't actually discussed anything. We haven't discussed anything about the fight at all. I've checked on him and had phone calls yeah. and text messages. And we just is he talked, okay? Is he oh okay? yeah, he's, he's bang on. He's lovely. He's having a great time on holiday. Um, getting some sun and um, yeah, we catch up. Like, I've checked in on him to make sure he's good and had like and there's banter and stuff really. But we've not spoken about boxing at all because I, t I just don't want him to think or talk about boxing for a month or so. Right, finally, Tony Bellew. Um, I think everyone's seen his comments by now and everyone's had opinions on his comments about Joe Joyce, British level, would he struggle with Fabio Wardley? Um, first of all, when you heard those comments, what was your initial thoughts? I've got to be honest, and this is probably where my experience, like where I lacked a bit of experience. I was really angry when I first heard it, really angry, like fuming. And I was like phoning people, like, what's this about? Like, it's just it's crazy. It's crazy. Like, and it still is crazy, by the way. I stand by that for sure. But, um, hey, I just find it so disrespectful. Like, do you know what? It annoys me even more because it is Tony, right? This is a guy who is a proper boxing man, proper boxing man, ex-world champion, won every, every other title there was, British, Commonwealth, fought over Mackenzie, like European against Masternak, I believe, like fought at the highest level. And he's a big name in the sport, right? And he's got a lot of influence as well. And he's coming out with comments like that. And there's no way he believes that. There's no way he believes that. Why would he say it then? If I said it, it's just going to get me into trouble. But the, no, why would he say it? It's politics, probably more than anything. But politics. But I don't like break it down, right? And this is no offence to Fabio Woolley because Fabio Woolley is a very, very good fighter, and actually he inspires me a lot actually because he's coming from a similar background to Johnny and stuff like that, and he inspires me to show like how high you can go up, even if you weren't an elite amateur like Joe was and whatnot. But. To a guy whose best win was Nathan Gorman, and, and which was a very hard fight for as long as it lasted, and also had been rocked by Eric Molina, who at the end of his career and things like that. And by the way, which is still a great win for for um, World League, it's ex World Title challenger who gave Wilder a good fight. So I'm not discrediting it at all. But what has he seen from that to suggest that, he could, that Joe Joyce wouldn't last of him? It's absolutely crazy. This is a guy who only beat Parker 12 months ago, knocked him out as well. This is a guy that's knocked out Carlos Saka, who just beat Tony Yoka, an Olympic gold medalist. This is a guy that's beat um, Daniel Dubois. The list goes on. The list goes on. Like, I can't believe that he would even say something like that. It's so disrespectful. Like, even if he thinks that, why would you, like, put that out there? When you know the guy's probably going through a hard time, you know that he's probably got a lot of people making comments about him. Maybe a, a reaching an arm out and checking in on him would be, would be nice, wouldn't it? It's like a guy that's obviously probably inspired a lot of people in the game, fought at the, at the very highest level. If he's that e so much easy for a fight, yeah, if he's that, he went British level, he can come out of retirement and fight him then on the last pay-per-view fight for him and then show us how bad Joe Shin is. Because it's, it's crazy. Well, I found you'd be it. open for Tony Belly versus Joe Joyce. Mate, why wouldn't I be? Like, it's a great fight, a great, great money fight. But I know I'm only hypothetically talking here. I'm not trying to make like out something like that would happen. Joe, uh, Tony's happily retired and doing a good job in country and whatnot. And and Joe's got to do his own thing, coming back and working on coming back. Um, but I just was really hurt and disrespected by his comments because. Um, listen, Joe Joyce is like a brother to me. That we are very close, and um, and I just think comments like that are absurd. Like, I don't mind what other people were saying. Like Joe may not be elite level and stuff like that. That's, you can have that opinion because we've had two back-to-back -back performances that weren't great. Yeah, so I can respect that opinion. That's fine. But to say like British, this is a guy who should have been an Olympic gold medalist who got robbed of Olympic gold. One of Britain's most decorated amateurs of all time. Yeah. And look what he's done in the pro game. British, Commonwealth, European. WBO interim. WBC silver. Like, the belt scout are never ending. Commonwealth. Like, in four, he's the fastest Commonwealth champion of all time in the heavyweight division. The disrespect. It's outrageous. I don't even think Fabio would make comments like that. And I want to shout out to Fraser for um, 
was very nice comments he spoke about Joe and fired back at Tony but I just think it's crazy comments so I don't want to slag Tony Berry off because he's an ex-world champion who I have the utmost respect for and I actually idolise as a fighter because um, he brought many great nights to the UK and gave a very good effort against Usyk but um, but yeah those comments are just outrageous I don't know anyone who can really say that and believe it like and actually like what they're going off of to say that, I just find it crazy, but listen, is this his opinion? Very, very last one. At some point you will see Tony Bellew. Um, you will come face to face with him. It could be on Saturday night at, or the, or at Sheffield. What would you say to him if he was standing with, next to you right now? Nothing, I'll be like the Parker situation and get really scared again. <laughs> no, no, what would you want to say to him, Shane? I, I, do you know what, to be honest, it's one of those things. Um, I just want to say to him where he gets that opinion from really I'm not listening I'm in no way shape or form here trying to start an argument with anyone especially Tony Bellew right are you I'm, scared of Tony Bellew I'm not scared of him but <laughs> if he was angry in my face I would be I'd be squeaking big time and I'd be looking for the nearest matchroom security guard like hey help me and then when they get involved I'm like yeah come on I don't understand behind him <laughs> but no no I'm in no way trying to start anything I'm just really disappointed by the comments that's all it is it's not not me being rude disrespect, but I've got no right at all to be disrespectful or rude to Tony Bowie because that man has achieved milli uh, like the most amazing things anywhere like I don't know really what to say really to him. but yeah he's achieved <laughs> the most unbelievable things so and I've the utmost respect for him but I just think those comments were really wrong and disrespectful and I don't see how he genuinely believes that because he's got nothing to go off of to say that when Fabio has not competed anywhere near the same level Excellent. Shane, thank you very much for speaking to IFL TV. I'm sure I'll see you in media events this week and outside of media events this week. Yeah, yeah. I'll be here all week. We've got the press conference tomorrow, weighing on Friday. Uh, and Pop maybe, World on Thursday. Yeah, yeah. May, may, <laughs> may, 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 may watch the football or something. And then, uh, and then, yeah, we've got the Janade on Saturday night.